Hello, everyone. This is Pastor Nick Gentile. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I'm an American pastor based in upstate New York. Um, I've been a partner with Pastor Paul of Christ's Assemblies Church International, which is based in Pakistan, for over two years. Um, this morning, I received an urgent message and prayer request from his wife. Many of, you, many of you have already seen the picture of Pastor Paul and his younger brother in jail behind bars and read the description provided by his wife. For those who haven't, I've cleaned up the grammar, but this is what Pastor Paul's wife communicated in that message. Dear friends, please keep my husband and his brother in your prayers because today they went to the local police station to complain about the continued harassment that he, our family, and our church have received from Muslims in our area that are upset with the gospel work that we are doing. As many of you already know, this is the same group of Muslims that have persecuted us for a long time and have made several very dangerous accusations against my husband and the church that can either result in either a long prison sentence for my husband and his brother, or death or both. For many hours, we didn't know where Pastor Paul or his brother were. But after searching for them, we found out that the police had arrested him and his brother and put both of them in jail. I am so worried. Please keep them lifted up in your prayers, my dear friends. Sincerely, Mrs. Pastor Paul. Now, as you heard, this is an urgent situation. Christians are terribly persecuted in Pakistan. At best, they are third-class citizens, and for the most part, they are treated no better than slaves. Oftentimes, they are falsely accused of violating the blasphemy laws or of desecrating the Quran or of attempting to forcibly convert a Muslim to Christianity or to try to convert them at all, even if it's not by force. Um, which is what Pastor Paul has been accused of doing by the culprits involved in this situation. He was falsely accused this past summer by a young woman that left Christianity for Islam that Pastor Paul attempted to forcefully reconvert her to Christianity. She and others filed a false police report against Pastor Paul with that false allegation. That caused a lot of problems for Pastor Paul, his family, and his congregation. As a result, he was facing a potentially long prison sentence, death or both, as I stated before. Um, th those are the crimes for, the, for what he, th those are the possible penalties or punishments for what he has been accused of. He and his attorneys went back and forth to court, and there were many delays regarding a verdict during the process because of corruption, because Christians are not given justice. By and large, they don't receive justice. They have no recourse or help, no legal representation for the most part, for the most part. And so they're, they're constantly hoodwinked and screwed over and they get the shaft constantly um, in Pakistan on every level of society. Um, and he was even told by the police that if he paid them a bribe of thousands of dollars, that the case against him would go away or disappear again. This was in the summer. However, because Pastor Paul is a man of faith, completely trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ for everything, he refused to pay the bribe, entrusting himself to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. In time, by the grace of God, his faith was rewarded and the charges were dropped. Praise God. Now, that was the background for what has occurred today. Um, fast forward to the present, and these culprits are once again continuously harassing, threatening, and physically attacking Pastor Paul, his family, and his congregation. That's what they've been doing, and that's why Pastor Paul went to the police station with his brother to file a complaint against them. They're also desecrating the grounds of Pastor Paul's congregation by throwing trash in front of the church, as a woman was caught on surveillance footage doing that. Okay, and Pastor Paul posted that up recently. There was a woman who threw trash in front of the church. So in response to all of these attacks, as I just said, Pastor Paul and his brother went to the police station for assistance, but were instead arrested and jailed today. Now, I haven't been given any additional details 
but the situation is obviously very serious, as I've already laid out. Now, Pastor Paul's wife told me that they need money for a, le for a, for a legal defense or for legal defense, for a legal defense fund in order to secure good legal representation. I asked her if the Christian attorney that defended him and that actually attends Pastor Paul's congregation uh, before would be able to help them now. And she said, yes, he will, but he needs $550 immediately. So please send me whatever you can so I can send it to his wife. $550 is not a lot of money and his attorney needs the legal fees as soon as possible. He's going to need more than that moving forward, but for now he needs $550. Now, you can trust me with the money because when anyone donates to Pastor Paul's ministry, I'm the guy that receives the money via PayPal and sends it to Pastor Paul either through Western Union, via Western Union or MoneyGram. And I've been a good steward of what I've been entrusted with for over a year and will continue to operate in a trustworthy manner for Christ's glory. Again, I started out as a, as a supporter of the ministry. And then when the last pastor from the States, from the state of Ohio, had to drop out and he could no longer send the money to Pastor Paul, he asked me if I would do it uh, in November of 2018. And I said, yes, humbly said yes. So I've been doing it ever since. I faithfully sent him all the money that people have donated to him. I'm just the money guy, the money, the middleman, I should say, for the money. And I've been a faithful steward of getting it to him. You can trust me with the money. If you're not sure, get in touch with me on Facebook and we can talk about it. We can do a, I'll do a Facebook uh, messenger call with you, a video chat or a phone, uh, or a video chat or a phone chat, whatever you want to do, or audio chat, we can do that. Um, but I'm trustworthy. Now, the link to my PayPal account is in the description section of this video. Please give whatever you can. And I'll just finish up with this. The Lord Jesus Christ stated in Matthew 5, 10 through 12, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And in uh, John 16, 33, Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. So Jesus promises that we will have tribulation and experience persecution as we follow him. It is a guarantee, however, that comes with great blessings and rewards in this life and the life to come. At the same time, in Hebrews 13.3, we are admonished in the following way. Remember those in prison as if you were there yourself. Remember also those being mistreated as if you felt their pain in your own bodies. So we must remember Pastor Paul and his brother because they're being persecuted for their faith in Christ. And this verse is talking about actively remembering them in our thoughts and prayers, not just remembering them in an incidental or non-important manner, right? Lastly, the Apostle John wrote in 1 John 3, 17, if anyone with earthly possession sees his brother in need, but withholds his compassion from him, how can the love of God abide in him? And that's 1 John 3, 17. So we have an obligation as the body of Christ to come together if we're in a position to and to help these brothers, not just with our prayers, which are essential, but with our financial contributions and providing them with the, the money their family needs to secure the legal defense that they are in desperate need of right now. So if you have the money, give whatever you can, and I will get it to Pastor Paul's wife. I myself, I'm going to give what I can. I don't have much to give. I'm going to give what I can. So I'm not just telling you to give or encouraging me to get you to give. I'm also giving. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to share this video and give as much money as you can to help Pastor Paul and his brother during this very difficult time. And of course, pray, 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 and pray some more. That said, thank you for tuning in. Again, this is Pastor Nick Gentile. Remember, Jesus is Lord, Lord of all. Christ bless you and keep you and have a wonderful day. Shalom to you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.